for health reorganization tonight. Our health agents report, uh, discussion of monthly health agent report, uh, as well in regards to um, violations and inspections. We have a review um, uh, to talk about the proposed pesticide regulation, tree lawn policy, uh, the Mass Department Public Health uh, CBD advisory, and a review of minutes as well. So um, with that, I know we have a lot of folks in the room tonight. Um, the open discussion typically is something that's re reserved for anything that's not going to be on the agenda. Uh, something that's not going to be on the agenda oh, yeah. when we get to that point. Um, when there's this many folks in the room, we generally uh, seek to see if anyone has something to say on it. So uh, with that said, if there's nothing, if there's somebody that wants to say anything that isn't on the agenda already, raise your hand and say your name and address. Otherwise, you can wait till that point in the meeting. Okay, seeing none. Uh, we will get right into, I assume you're ready, right? You good? Just pull it in. Yep. Okay. So all we really need to say is call to order at 634. Yep. <laughs> That's the first part. <laughs> Thank you. Um, with that said, the first thing we do have on the agenda tonight is the Board of Health Organization. All our boards, committees, and commissions um, on a yearly basis need to reorganize um, to call for uh, positions of chair, vice chair. I think actually technically we only have a chair, but I think we've always traditionally voted for vice chair on this, on this board as well, too. Um, so with that said, does anyone uh, want to be chair for the upcoming year? I'll do it. Okay. <laughs> um, can I run this if I'm not putting my name in? Yeah, right? I, I think can, so, yeah. yeah. Existing. I think so. All right, so um, I nominate Evan Dove to be chair of the Board of Health. And then second you would second that nomination. <laughs> Any discussion on it? All those in favor? 3 0. It's the vote. Yeah. I mean, this is your seat now. <laughs> oh, we have to switch. Yeah, we don't have to switch for today. Yeah, we don't have to do it for today. But it is your agenda. It is your agenda for this. Uh, next up is the health agent report. If I may, um, the bylaws I think say you're supposed to elect a chair and yeah, vice chair. Vice chair. Oh, okay. So. I nominate, I nominate myself to be oh, vice chair. Can nominate yourself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you were saying? I thought you were trying to tell me. No, nope, you can nominate yourself. <laughs> okay. I second. All those in favor? You can vote for yourself. Three okay. zero. <laughs> Three zero. Okay. We have a new chair and vice chair for the year. Sorry. Uh, now the health agent report. So in June we had 23 inspections. In July we had 14. 13 complaints out of those 13 complaints they were random overgrown dumpsters animal complaints different things 11 of them have been corrected two are still outstanding zero animal inspections just because it's not that time of the year yet one septic abandonment no flu shots were um, administered my time is up <laughs> um, we do have some upcoming flu clinics. They are on the town website. Um, we will not be doing the flu clinic at the Fall Street Fair because the flu vaccine will not be in. It hasn't been developed yet, actually. There was four cases in Maven in June and four in July, actually, as well. What were those? In July, it was one ticks, but not triple E. One GI bug, one undercooked chicken. Oh no, two GI bug and one undercooked chicken. And in June, it was one Hep C, two cases of the flu, and one undercooked pork. Case of the flu in June. Okay. That's what the CDC said. I thought it was weird too, but. Um, I do have one thing I would like to read. Um, into the record. It's an email from the town manager. If there's anything that the town government can do to spread information um, regarding the prevention of Tripoli and West Nile, let us know and we'll make um, all, everything available that we can. Have there been any? We haven't seen any citizen either yet. Not, right? not here. There are some though yeah. up there. there some. But none in writing. What's the closest community? Do we know? It's not that even that close, I don't think, is it? 
I don't remember. I didn't write it down. And what do they do? Do they do testing on, on in every community? Yes. Yeah. So they have um, bait stations in certain right. spots of town, and they're like kind of like little traps, and then they take the mosquitoes and they test them. Okay. The cases that we've heard about on the news have been uh, from hospitalizations, though, correct? Yeah, but none, no one from or in ready. Um, yeah, I know, and I think Bob would share with me that some communities have actually closed um, down some rec uh, programs that they had, had going. I'm sure, obviously, in areas that are high, like basically with, with uh, mosquitoes in general, and hopefully they, um, they're not shutting them down without having some positive tests around the area. No? So, um, the time of year is kind of the time of year you start seeing that stuff. Especially so. August, right? That kind of yeah. seems to be the peak. Bob did say any preventative measures or issues to let him know, and then we have whatever resources are available that you need. And has the Board of Health generally in the past done anything uh, in regard to not information or anything? There's not a lot of historical knowledge from the three of us here. Yeah. Um, No, you, no, not 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 that I'm aware. Okay. Um, uh, I I'll think about it and and, and I mean. I, yeah, I'd just be curious if it was just something that I don't recall doing anything annually since I've been on. Right. Yeah. No, you can and right. um, have the power to. Um, and it's if it's something you look into and decide that. Like to take some steps. Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, okay. Questions I have. Uh, so now we're on to the discussion of monthly health agent report to include a detailed spreadsheet that will be reviewed at every meeting of violations cited during inspections and link spreadsheet to health page on town website. Um, I'd like to start by having board members discuss and then we'll definitely get the, the crowd here. <laughs> Anyone who wants to comment, um, we'll, we'll allow that. Uh, so, thoughts <laughs> in the last uh, couple months? Yeah, um, I'll, I'll go first if you okay. have any I did get the links that you sent um, to Laura, so I just want to pull those up. I should have those up. Um, the I one that stood on stu the screen. Okay. okay. The one that jumped out at me that I thought um, was something that would, could be a useful tool for reporting back to the board um, was the one I believe it was from Needham, their the spreadsheet that they had. Yeah, they have a, yeah. I think where they listed a, uh, I think they have um, just about everything in the world I listed know, on I it, which seems a little. They have a little bit, yeah. <laughs> a little too much information, quite frankly, that, you, you know, not all those boxes are going to get checked, if any of them, even on a yearly basis. So um, the one thing that, that stood out to me that I thought was um, was appropriate uh, was that it was it listed what it was, uh, and I believe that it also listed the date that it was found and the date that it was uh, corrected, mm -hmm. if, if I recall correctly. Um, that to me seemed to be a very useful document for re reporting back. Is that the one you were talking about? Kind of up? Um, it was a oh, spreadsheet at the beginning and then they. It was a spreadsheet at the beginning. And then it looks like they kind of broke it down by the restaurant. Was, was it the first early part? It's quite a long document. Actually. I know it is a long document. <laughs> yeah, I'll go back to the beginning. Had the number of cases yeah. of inspections and permits, and okay. So, kind of summary information at the top and then detail at the bottom. 
No, this is the one that didn't. It just had it listed what what the um, violation was. That was the. Yeah, I think they list the only the critical. Really? Well, they're not. I guess they're not. Oh, Jay. I mean, well, is that? No, that's not it. Is this it? Yeah, it was the it was the spreadsheet one. Um, was that it starts with this? Enrolling in the oh, retail program spreadsheet. Oh, it might be another retail program standard. No. Um, <laughs> It was just public health nurse report was the title on mine. Oh, the nurse report. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay, which is what she It's not this one. This one's the list is the Needham report. Yep. Well, the first page, wasn't it? Yeah, right. Nope. Yeah. Oh, close that one out. It's the same document. Oh, it's the same document. Yeah, just a different Okay. Oh, yeah. That, yes, this one. Thank you. Sorry, i got to keep changing the view. <laughs> So are you talking about the spreadsheet view or the, the spreadsheet? Summary? Oh, okay. yeah, the spreadsheet view. Um, you know, in my estimation, really, the the thing that we need um, to know is exactly what violation occurred, when it occurred, but more importantly, obviously, when when it was corrected, if it was corrected at that point in time, and when we when the information is given to us at meetings. The nurses report, though, is yeah. the report that I read to you every month. I just, instead of giving you like every single solitary like thing, I just read the ones that are highlighted that have something. Right. So they gave you okay. everything. We only had four, so I only read off the four. Okay. So this I see. is Maven. Oh, is that? Okay. So these four that I read off are this report. Are that report. She just gave, wrote down every single one. I just give you the four. Now that's Maven, so that's not inspections though. Correct. Right. This okay. is Maven. This is all Maven, her nurse's report. Right. So yeah. that that you're already uh, reporting on. Yeah, but instead uh, of giving you every single thing and just pointing out the four, I just tell you the four. Well, my, my thing was if, if you did it, if you s not switched it, and just did it alongside of that, I a similar report like that, but in relation to violations and inspections, oh. where you're listing what the violation is, when it, when it be, occurred, and when it was. That would remedy. be the next page of what they did. That's where it says the name of the restaurant and what it is. Right. Yeah, they just don't do it in a. So it's not. That's it. That's the spreadsheet. That's spread the page sheet. Jean has. Right. That says the name of the location, the date of the inspection, the violation. Right. And the description. It doesn't actually say if it was corrected or not. Right. right. And then it says in that separate document, the um, Needham Public Health Division, June 2019, it lists how, in terms of numbers, how many temporary food permits, how many um, plan reviews, pre-operation inspections, complaints. Yeah, it just, so it has the number of inspections listed in a different location and the details of the results. Yeah, I think my preference would be for a document that contains all of that information in one. So the, you know, for each, and we can say whether it's a routine or a reinspection, um, what violations were found with a, you can include a um, description or notes that has, you know, a lot of times say you write like, specifically for what they found uh, that can be included in there whether it was um, an unannounced or announced inspection um, so that we have yeah then we can have all of that data um, and it yeah yeah, I like adding announced versus unannounced inspection because I don't think that was on our previous, the tracking spreadsheet that the public citizen yeah. um, produced for us. I think that one wasn't on there, but we had some of that similar information like, and it didn't list the name of the restaurant, it listed a code and it didn't list um, the specific violation, but just whether it was critical or not. Yeah, critical. and I think so, I would prefer the specific. Yeah, I think. <coughs> I mean, especially since they're all coded by number. Yeah, we could have that. Yeah, piece of data is pretty succinct, and we would just know what it referenced. And any notes maybe could be added. Yeah. But 
so no matter what we do, the one thing we have to keep in mind is the amount of time it, it would take, take to make this document. As of right now, we're um, down down from a staffing standpoint. Right. I know in the case of Needham, Needham is, is not having any staffing issues. Oh, no, uh, no. Currently, right now, they, they have plenty of staff to handle and accommodate something like this. So I, I tend to um, stick to the, you know, keep it simple method uh, more than anything else when we don't have the available time to, to do anything else. Um, and, you know, I don't want to have it too extensive a report necessarily to us because um, the inspectors have to fill out their, the paperwork while they're doing the report then come back and put all that paperwork into another second report. Seems a lot, seems pretty redundant for something that may be a simple um, problem that could, that's easily fixed by, um, by whatever establishment it is. So to Seven's point, just to let you know, Needham has 17 and a half staff members. <laughs> wow. <now. laughs> yeah, two. Right. Um, and are we, we're planning to hire more food inspectors. So that would that be one. Right? So we'd have one three to their 18 and a half because they're hiring one more person. Right. And so currently the way that we track is solely paper based. So is that true? No, we would like detail report. <coughs> right. Are you yeah. saying the food inspector fills out the report? Filling out the report as they're going through the inspection. Right. right. And then I'm just confirming that that information is not then logged anywhere like on a tracking sheet i don't believe so right is that correct it's not logged correct it's just filed it's filed, it's filed under. Correct. right so if as the massachusetts department of public health could do if they asked us for you know the number of critical inspections or, or inspections that resulted in a critical violation it would be very difficult to compile that information right because it would be sorting through all the paper Documents. I think that's part of my concern yeah. too. That we're. So I don't think they do. They audit. I don't no. think they audit. No. Never. I mean, I don't know the process by which. I know that the state has, um, if they find that uh, a local board of health is not uh, protecting public health adequately, they can come in and have come in in the past. I don't know how often, and um, expand the health and take. Then the state takes over. And, and that's supposed to be an unpleasant, uh, uh, a negative experience. I imagine that doesn't happen too often. I would hope. I would, I would hope. <laughs> they disband the Board of Health or they go through the files to see the violations? I, th I don't know. I don't know the exact process of when the state decides to take over. But I know that it can, and I've, and from when I was on the board, I understood that they could yes, they um, just take over. Uh, uh, enforcing the, the health uh, regulations uh, in the town. But how do they find out if you haven't enforced them? Was I think his that, question. Uh, that I do not know. I don't know if people will complain or uh, I have no idea. And the reason I was wondering about it, and I'm not an attorney, so um, in reading through the food code, it was Chapter 9, Special Requirements, 105 CMR 590.009. Um, sorry, I can pass this out to you guys. I'm skipping ahead to something I was thinking about for the, the food sheet, but I was thinking, should we set up our tracking system, since that is something we're supposed to do, so that it aligns with any information that the Department of Public Health might ask of us? Would it make sense to go ahead and set up a system to track that? And again, maybe it's something that rarely to never happens. My understanding is that they only ask for the inspections when there's a foodborne illness. Is that incorrect? Uh, That's how it's yeah. been for the decade that I've been doing yeah. it. Unless something's <coughs> changed. Again, I don't know what would prompt them to ask come to a town and ask for that information. Yeah. Right. I think but I was just. I think it's um, the important thing is that it's 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 public record. It's available to the public. Mm -hmm. That's. Um, it's another side of the, the coin. You know. Right, so there are different, there's public accessibility and then since we are supposed to be in charge of tracking this information, there's making sure we have a good tracking system right. and thinking in terms of, um, given that we've seen this tracking sheet already, is that the sort of approach that would be easy to use so that we at any point in time would know, oh, we had well, the violations this, you know, three months, or to see what look at things over time, or to see whether or not there are any changes. Um, is this the, the new 
um, it's system that, that they're they're rolling out? Uh, it's the 2013 food code. Um, this is what this is, is uh, from. I actually have one more. I don't know. Um, but anyway, my point in bringing this up was just since we're talking about what specific types of data we want to track, I was thinking, yeah. what would we want to track? Oh, maybe whatever they might yeah, ask us about <laughs> was my thinking there. And so it may be more than necessary, it may not be, but if we're in the process of designing something from scratch. Yeah, so I was also looking at, I know I sent you guys a bunch of documents related to this, but it was the Voluntary National Retail Food Regulatory Program Standards, mm -hmm. a lot of words, <laughs> um, which is basically a best practices for food protection programs. And it, it is voluntary, but I think it's something to strive for. Um, and this could be incorporated or useful, I think, having a, a database I think could be useful for achieving those standards um, in terms of so for example I think EDAM, the not there are nine program standards and they've gone through one of them and we're able to see you know across the town which uh, you know that there were certain types of violations that they were finding that were more common and so they could do targeted education to the businesses on those specific issues uh, and the businesses it sound sounds like the businesses were pretty supportive of that um, so uh, yeah. that could be useful I think so I think do <coughs> Sorry. So I think like what I'm hearing is we have the current state of the different data elements we're gathering and then we have a future ideal state. Overlaying the current state and the future state is our resources. So how how many how much time can we invest in this? What human resources do we have to implement a future state, right? So like the data elements we capture today what the future data elements are and identify is that feasibly possible with our current resources. Yeah, I think that's a great okay. point and I was, we must have been thinking a lot on the same lines too because I was thinking that I wanted to say that while we are contemplating this sort of ideal state, absolutely we want to keep in mind how much time this would take <coughs> and it seems like we're already for the most part, collecting this information. So it, I don't think it would be new information that we would be collecting, but we might do a second step of then inputting some, you know, selected information into a database. And the way I'm envisioning this, although I don't know what other board members think, is that it would essentially be here going forward. It's not like we would be right, right. doing yeah. any, you know, trying to update everything from the past however many years. It also sounds like what I'm hearing is there's a, a, a need or a um, wanting to kind of analyze the data maybe a step further than what we're doing right now. So we're getting a report out, but it seems like there's, the, there's a need to do more like longitudinal, like crunching of numbers and, and looking for trends and themes and like how can we manipulate the data to present that information to us in a useful way. Is that accurate? That's a good point. The, the distinction between the two, because I, I feel like I'm coming at it from because we have that I data. see value yeah. in being able to do. So I think I'm trying to justify why I believe that it is important to have these data. Yeah. And part of it is just I'm a person who really likes to have you know adequate. <laughs> easily accessible like records that, that are easy to you know do a pivot table on mm -hmm. and get some calculations if you want that information quickly yep um, but I do think that's a separate value from the spreadsheet I mean there would be tracking in and of itself so yep. that you know Laura just 
click some points and pulls that information really easily yeah. versus doing deeper analysis where you're looking at trends over time or something like that, which could be a value, but I think there's also just value in having an um, easy to interpret yeah. and access um, information, at least to the Board of Health. Yeah. I just want to like try and structure our thinking because we've seen a lot of good examples of similar communities, of not similar communities, and like let's just what is literally realistic with what we have right. today, um, and how to move forward in a way that makes sense for residents, makes sense for businesses, makes sense for our needs. So that's that's my thoughts. <laughs> and I know when we left off in our last meeting, we talked about a slow rollout for that same reason. You know, we're not really sure how much time will be committed um, to this and how much time can be committed to this. And, and you don't want to have a project like this do is take away from actually doing the job of, of making sure the public is, is safe. Um, so that to me is all, is, should be the foremost line of thinking that we have, that, that we're not taking away from time of staff to actually do the protection rather than, you know, just to make sure we can collect data. Um, so I'm not, I'm not sure. I, I got the sense that from our last meeting, and, and you can both correct me if I'm wrong, that starting out with having something up on our website is probably not the, the right line to go at. Um, this is to start a little bit more uh, from a slow process and get something that's simple to have Laura convey back to the board um, what violations and inspections were done, uh, if there were violations, what they were, when they, when they were found, and then when they were corrected. Um, those to me are, are the bigger data points. I don't know if we necessarily, anytime we, even if we make um, a format that, we're, that Laura is using to convey, um, to convey that on, it doesn't necessarily have to be something that's um, put up on our website uh, for the whole world to see. Um, especially, you know, we've heard from the businesses that um, some of these infractions are, are very minor in case, and um, if we're not getting any benefit from putting their names on it, I don't really see the value in it for us as a board. Um, the public can, can always still call and, uh, or send an email to find out, hey, you had a violation of this and it was corrected. Who was that for? Um, I don't know that we necessarily have to push that information. Like, that's my feelings. I think, yeah, I think my feeling is this is sort of a beta. <laughs> um, we are, you know, we haven't seen data, so we're... We have, that's the thing. Just not in the format. Like, the health agent reports. Yeah, but we haven't it's seen the, the number de of Right, we haven't seen the detailed data, so it's... Right, so making a decision about posting something online, I think, seems premature in my mind. Um, with you. Because, yeah, because we just don't, we yeah. don't know. I think it, maybe then I, it sounds like we're kind of in agreement okay. that that's not the first step. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and we may never get to that. Okay. Right. We don't, we don't, so we don't do know if the other step is even coming. Out. Yeah. Right. I think what she's saying is I give you the numbers every month. so. Really, what you'd have to do is just add up all the months like I do and make sure that we hit the 300. Well, well right. I mean, I've done that, and it looks like we're over, which is great. So we're ahead of schedule <laughs> from where we Actually, should Actually, we're be. a month behind. Um, oh, because I had calculated I didn't have June and July since you just reported those today. Yeah, but and some of those are re-inspections. Right, so we, we re finished all our inspections. Well, that's a great point. Then from the... Right. Data we're currently collecting. I thought that we had done 156 inspections and reinspections, and right. we would only need to have done 110 by now. So, but this there's, more, there's, <laughs> there's more there's information that I need. More <laughs> stores and restaurants. Well, no, I thought yeah, it's just because some of the because the inspections and the reinspections are reported together. I can separate them. I was separating them, and then when I was told to put them together, I can separate them. That's not a big deal. But really, if you just add up every single month. It tells you exactly what number we're at. That's how I figure out if we've hit everything. Right, which is what I did in preparation for this meeting. And although I did not have June and July because those were just reported on today, um, and 
If we need to do 131 inspections twice a year, that would be 262 inspections, which averages out to 22 per month. And there were some months we did less, some months we did more, but we would anticipate having done 110 by May, and we had actually done 156 by May. But again, those are the what I've gotten from the notes, which reports inspections and reinspections together. So there's one example of how we can make the reporting, I think, more clear yes. so that we know exactly. Well, yeah, I can separate inspections from reinspections mm -hmm. like I did before. Yeah. 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 That's not a big deal. Yeah. So that's one piece of data <coughs> yeah. that we can separate Absolutely. that we already have. And I think we're already collecting the other information. Yes. Um, it's just not getting reported back to us. Right. right. So we would need to clarify what we want the information to look like. Do we want printouts? Do, like, I think we just need to be like literal about mm -hmm. what we expect to see so that it like fulfills our needs. So I think uh, my thought is that we would have, we would not have a printout. Uh, it would not even necessarily be a packet item. So Laura's health agent report would not really actually change, but that we would either have a routine access through a Google Sheet or an Excel spreadsheet that is an updated version is sent to us prior to every meeting. Does that okay. make sense? So it wouldn't be not something, something you would see, but that something we would, so that if any of us have any questions about something on there, I mean, obviously, I think first you go directly to Laura, but um, but if we felt there was something that needed to be discussed in a meeting, we could do it. We would have the information. For a severe violation of some kind. So that would be public record, right? Any, anything that you put down like that will be yes. You mean, but the but we sure that but only inspection a, reports. But right? only really upon request. It's not that we have right. to put the, um, um, we don't have to put it out to the public, but the public has to have access to it via the um, Department of uh, Health. The tracking documents, though? So, like, does the public have access to that document that she held up a minute ago that had the MAVEN reports? Yes. So how, I mean, I imagine there's some sort of tracking documents that you have <coughs> that are public information and some documents on your computer that are just documents that you create. Any or document we create in government is a public record. Yep. Oh. Unless you write it down in a three-ring spiral binder, it's a public. It's a public record. Emmy, if I if I yes. may, um, maybe to simplify this and to save time and resources for the the, the health uh, division. Um, first, back in 2017, and for a year ago, we were looking a year prior to that, something like that. We, the board was, and the health division was looking at um, testing out. I know um, in 2017, the health inspector was testing out uh, a digital um, uh, health inspection report, and so everything would all automatically be uploaded into a data set. And and uh, I don't I, I don't know uh, what what happened to that. I left the board before that came to fruition. So that's one possibility in the future. Um, and then all the data would be ready available to you. But um, in the meantime, if I see, I understand that you're getting the overall view report, um, but that you're not seeing the, the actual data itself. And instead of having um, the health agent um, come up with some fill in some summary table from all the inspections. Usually if you want to see the, the the actual information, get access to the actual information, you just re there were 23 real reports in this past month, you can just request, like anybody else, um, copies of the 23 inspections. And then you have, everything's in front of you. And you can 
the site that may better inform what you kind of may be looking for. Can they automatically just be sent to board members? Yeah, I mean, if what sounds like like that's yeah, the board right? could. I mean, oh, you know, rather than that way, everybody's getting the same information. Right. You know, everyone's getting it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Seems like that would be fine. Yes. I mean, you just copy that would be the 23 inspections and, and or, or scan them and then send them scan to the board, board, board. Send them to board members. Yeah, and okay. then you have, that, the, yep. have the raw data and then you yep. can sort of think later we can, on. We can do whatever. And that, and that yeah. shouldn't take much effort. That's true. Much time from the inspection. Are these generally like one page documents, right? Sometimes two or three. Mm -hmm. oh, always two. Minimum two. Mm -hmm. Two. Okay. And that would be included in the packet? Yeah. It, would it could be, or it could, could be, be or just information. Just but the important thing there is you know what the critical violation was mm -hmm. and when it was fixed. So you'd have, um, instead of Laura having to type in all of that stuff. Yep. Um, and it'll also be an, an education on what the health inspections are, you know, or what they're looking at. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a good suggestion. Yeah, I, I mean, I wouldn't, that? I wouldn't want to include it in the packet yeah. for obvious reasons, has a lot of sensitive information, but um, from a viewing standpoint, that certainly simplifies things. It certainly makes it an easier process where you're not doing, you're not doing a duplication um, of filling out some kind of summary chart, and you're getting all the information that that the, uh, the inspector had been putting down from the actual um, inspection. Thank you. I, uh, <laughs> it's um, hard on the yeah. Yeah, on the I mean, plot. I do think that that certainly provides a more comprehensive set of information prior to each meeting. And then I'm wondering about things like, well. You know, if we then create, you know, we're sort of entering our own data every month, then that does transition some of the time resources from the health agent to yeah. the Board of Health members, and we could have something that's searchable and, and um, you know, for analytic yeah. purposes more easily. Um, and in terms of sensitive information, I mean, again, this information is publicly available so you know we're just making sure we're not hiding it <laughs> the, you know it's sensitive yes but it's also it's uh, also public publicly available at request yeah, right, right right at request or, so, at the, or as we talked about at the establishment itself right <coughs> um, and so then if the board of health members create a tracking sheet is that or is that not something that a member of the public could request yeah, that's a public we, document. We, we're, we're, we're all employees. Yeah. We do have town council in the room. Yeah. Just saying. <laughs> um, yeah, it sort of depends on whether you're using it for your like own personal notes or whether you're sharing it with other okay. individuals and other members. Um, so there could be an argument if it's just for you personally that that wouldn't be subject to the public records law. Um, but if you do share it or use it during a meeting, then it could become public. So. So a little bit fact-based analysis there. Okay. So your own private database sounds like is a good. <laughs> right, but I imagine I would use that information to share with board members. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. That's good to know that distinction. Thank yes, you. it is. Well, I think if, if certainly if there's something that, that from a violation standpoint that warrants discussion, that the, that's obviously something that we can bring into play. I don't know. My feeling would be if the matter was resolved when it was supposed to be resolved. I don't know that the board needs to dis necessarily have discussion about it, um, so, but certainly, you know, I'm, I'm sure there are there are cases that are so severe that the board would want to, um, or if there's continuation of a of an offense that just is not is becoming problematic uh, for any particular establishment. I think those things certainly should be discussed at the board level. But for stuff that that is common occurrence. Um, you know, um, that comes up and is violated and then, and then is corrected. I think to me, I, I, sh I want to just know that it's corrected. That to me is the most important data point that we have on there. The rest of it, you know, if, if you put your own database together and you can do some tracking, maybe you can pull out some trends and then you, know, you can 
come back and say, hey, I'm seeing this trend here, you know, that, that probably would be a different scenario. Um, but just uh, from a reporting standpoint, as long as, as long as it's corrected, that to me is the most important part. I could, Emmy. Um, we are uh, moving over to a new, uh, as you know, a, a slightly new um, software program with the cloud. <laughs> so yeah, so view view permit. Um, we just got the uh, tip of the iceberg, I think yesterday about um, what's going on, and so it's going to be a six-month process of of um, transitioning to the new cloud-based system. So we will be learning more about what that tool is going to look like. Yeah. And that could be something so to add something. as well. And yeah, that would be, that could be really helpful. Oh, it could be. Um, I hate to see the board going in one direction and all of a sudden <laughs> that tool appears. Yeah. But if we did something that was along the lines of what Andy was suggesting, yeah. that's not, yeah, that's not you're not really reinventing yeah, not really the reinventing wheel. Yeah. So that might be a good... Yeah entry point for us. Or if one board member wanted to sit with staff and review once a month? Yeah. That's, if there's one board member that's designated as, as you know, taking on that role, we could go through all the inspections and review and handle it that way too. But I think all three board members probably would be, yeah, is probably preferable. Yeah. Um, and, they, and, you know, then we're not taking up more staff time unless we need to. Um, so I know you, you, I know there's a lot of folks in the room. I know. Yeah. Too, but I know. We should probably, I, yeah, there's been a lot should. of talk, so we should probably give a quick <laughs> summary of what, what it is I feel like everyone's thinking here. Yeah. Sure. So, <laughs> I think we all seem to be thinking <laughs> that uh, getting the, the inspection reports just scanned and sent to us seems to be an appropriate first step. But not put in the packets. But not put in the packets. Are you? Yep. Yeah. Right yeah. Works for me. Are you saying to the actual? To the board members. The board members and the associates? Yes. Yes. That's it? Do we want to separate inspections and reinspections in the health agent reports? This no. Yeah, I think. Oh, I guess yeah. Well, we'll it's going to it's going to we'll say right on the report, the, correct, Laura? But um, so we were discussing before we got to that conclusion. We, just, we were talking about doing yeah, yeah, just separating so right, inspections just to separate and reinspections. Them, then I was told to put them together. Right, but now on the report it says reinspection. Yeah. Right. Box. Or yep. first inspection or something. So now I don't have to give a total every month. Yeah. I, am I doing that step as well? And have we well, decided on this for sure, well, or is this open for conversation? Or what am I? We, well, we just kind of informed uh, the folks in the room and those listening at home what it is our, where our intentions are going to be. So we want to let people have a little discussion. That's something that we could. I want to make sure. I <laughs> your, your actual accounting of it, does, I'm sure, isn't <laughs> that much of a concern <laughs> to the folks in the room. So do we, okay, sure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's move forward with that first point. <laughs> okay, uh, so we'll open it up to people in the room who would like to comment. Please raise your hand and then introduce yourself. And so address. that Name and address. Name, yeah, and address so that Laura can get it written down. <laughs> can I just start just because I may have to leave? Sure. Um, Ayla Shavey from Bonati Tavern on Main Street. Um, this, okay, it's a follow-up to the last meeting, but what we're hearing is exactly the same thing as we thought. What you're looking for is to get all this data, put it on now for yourselves. But now you have that, and you can go ahead and do what you want to do that we're all objecting to you doing, because you're going to have all that data, um, which your goal, by the looks of things, is to make it accessible to the public. Laura, what I'm hearing now, is gives you a monthly report of the inspections that have been done previously over the last two months. 
um, you are like any member of the public can say to her, can I see that inspection? If you're concerned of what, what she's reporting to you on a monthly basis. What now user agreeing to or researching is for her to send a copy of the inspections to you, the whole thing, and now you have it so you can go ahead and do this. Now, because you have the information without getting the approval to let the, have the health department release it. You were asked to provide comparable information for towns that were doing this exact thing that you want to do, and you only came up with one. It's not a comparable town to start with, and it's a reporting system that you want to do. It's in what that okay. was. Yeah. Yeah, let me let you You were asked to provide information on towns that run this program that you want to do. Right. Not one was presented. Well, what I, you gave us. I can address that if you want, or if you want to continue, we can continue. Why well, cut me off before I say what this is, oh, what please, you provided, as opposed to what we asked for. We asked for comparable towns that run the program that you were looking to do at the last meeting and two years ago. You didn't provide that. What you provided was pages and pages of a, a voluntary um, documentation of a period of time and it wasn't you said that the restaurants were quite happy to participate and they liked this information. They were randomly selected. They didn't volunteer. And they did this because they got a, a, a state, um, what do you, got, uh, what do you call it? Grant. Grant. To do this, right? And it put all the documents together and shows. And also what this report is, is only critical foodborne violations. It's not a full health inspection report. So that, that's my point. You haven't given us anything to show that what you're trying to do is valid for this town. And my big concern is now that you're, if you go ahead with having Laura send you every single one, that you can go and get yourself out of the office if you want to. You want to take the time. Now you want them sent. And I'm still very concerned about these being public documents now because they're going interdepartmental. So now the public has it easier online. And that was always my thing. Don't. Unless they, if they want it, they can come and ask. But they can come to me. I'll show them all of my health inspections. They can come to the town and get it. But when you put it online, it, there was enough people that said it last last time. But I'm like, what you're doing here now is giving you the information that you want to put on the website, and you can do what you want now with it because you don't have to get that information anymore. I I I, I just I, I I don't know why you want the public to have this available. With you know, you're usurping the health department whose professional job is to go out there and make sure that the public is kept safe. It's in, oh, you can. Oh, well, you know what, it's, so let I, me, I just don't get why he's doing it, that's all. Okay, so let me see if I can summarize. Yeah. Um, so the first concern was that you guys had asked for information on comparable towns and then we did not provide that this meeting. And the second concern was that if Laura scans and sends us this information that we can make a public document like tracking and post it online mm -hmm. okay so the, to the first concern I did try to collect that information over the last two months and I was in communication with Jean and Laura about the best way to proceed forward and we decided that because there were different options for example there were I think 23 comparable towns that we've used before as a town of Reading um, there was some discussion about whether or not I should be allowed to choose those towns myself or we should discuss that as a board. And there was also discussion that I shouldn't be allowed to figure out what information I would be calling other towns about and that we would want to consolidate any calls made to other towns so that we're not inundating them. So the decision was made that instead of me collecting this information on my own, I would discuss it with all the board members and with Jean and Laura's help possibly have them collect that data for us. So that's why we don't have that information you wanted. That's the first point. <laughs> okay. And the second point is that, again, I really appreciate having the information about what does and does not make something a public document. And it sounds like we would not I mean, I'm certainly not intending to post this tracking sheet online, um, that it seems from what I'm hearing that what we would do is, if it seemed there were multiple violations, something that we saw from our tracking sheets, we could bring that to the board and discuss it. And that 
it, it, there's sort of a, a balancing act between whether or not we would actually share the entire document with the Board of Health or whether or not we would just say, you know what, I noticed that one restaurant has had six violations that haven't been corrected. Can we discuss that as a board? Is that, am I on the same page as what you guys were thinking? Or Correct. Not. <laughs> Okay. I think that yeah, so all of our idea is that that's what the health department is for. They're going to penalize the restaurant if they continually, and, and you know what? Anyone they should. Here, yeah. They should. Anyone I mean, here, if we have a repeat critical violation, shame on us. Yeah. And find a way, or shut us down, or do whatever you want. And I just, again, as I asked you last time, are any safe certified? No, you're not. So I would, I would actually request that if you're going to get this information, get yourself certified so you know what you're reading. I, I am very familiar with Serve Safe certification. I do supervise two people who have Serve Safe certification, and I may get it in the next few months. But it's true that I'm not currently Serve Safe certified, so I am familiar with a lot of the right. different regulations. Good. Good. But um, if we're I familiar think, with it. We're not allowed to open. We have to be certified to open. Right. I understand the distinction. I was just trying to make it clear that I'm not totally in the dark about some of these distinctions. Can I make one suggestion as a go-between for like what what you want, you know, what you're willing to provide, and what perhaps we want? Um, get the reports. Let the health department deal with their inspections. And by the way, all inspections are nobody getting notified on any inspection of any kind. So. If you wanted that on the report as to whether they were, you know, scheduled or not, nobody gets notified. So they come in sight unseen, nobody knows, so they see everything that's going on at, at, under our normal business day. If there's violations on that, we get 10 days to fix any violation. If it's a major critical thing and you're going to get people sick, you're shut down until you fix that. So I would suggest as a go-between for now is if we get the 10 days to fix it and they come back with a reinspection and it's not fixed, then yes, you get that report. Here's one location that was given an opportunity by law to fix the problems. And if we don't fix it, you're notified that you have a location in town that has been flagged and you want to keep a track of that. That's my compromise that I think would Are possibly there, work. Thanks for your Are there more comments? Yes. Um, Mary Ellen O'Neill, 125 in Reading. Um, I want to say I don't think documents should be, be mailed to the board that aren't public. It's public because it's being sent to members of the board. The Board of Health is appointed by the board, the select board, as I understand, to oversee the public health. They hire the health agents. So final responsibility, to, in my mind, as a consumer and resident taxpayer of Reading, is that is vested in the Board of Health. That's who I hold responsible. Um, I am, as a person who goes to restaurants, will bring my grandchildren to the restaurants, I'm rather shocked at the unwillingness to share public information. And I think where we may not have the system in place yet, I think it's a goal that we should be working towards. One, I think at a minimum, the Board of Health monthly should be receiving the reports and they should be in the packets. And I would, if I had been a member of the Board of Health tonight, I would have wanted to know why weren't all the things corrected? You know, what's the issue? Um, there has to be more, um, I think, um, you know, curiosity and inquisitiveness about what, what is happening. So I think that going forward, the goal is to make, get a system set up, perhaps where I have no idea if this works, but health inspectors have, you know, an iPad with them, they enter the information into a document that then is linked to another document that trans information is easily transferred to, is 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 put on the website. Uh, we want to be a town that's friendly, you know, to business, but also friendly to people that want to come and enjoy, you know, the restaurants and the businesses that we hope to build here. And we have to have a good reputation. I want it to be sterling, and I want to know that I'm safe, and my grandchildren are safe when we come um, into the restaurants. And I don't think I have to, as a uh, you know, a customer have to, or as a resident, be calling the Board of Health where its staff may or may not be available um, to find out and inquire about all the different restaurants. Everyone, you know, the young people coming up, everything's in the phone, click, 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 there it is, they get their information. And I think that has to be our goal, to be transparent and clear and open. Thank you. Hi, I'm Michael Palmer from Fusilis. Um Speaking to this lady, I don't know if you were here for the last meeting. 
No, it wasn't at the okay. last meeting. So the last meeting, what was discussed and what some of the business owners uh, are concerned with, specific to what you were talking about, is all this information is available. Okay, every, everything they're asking for is available. The difference is they're asking to post it voluntarily online to broadcast it. So, like you just said, young people today, or people in general today, right, if they're researching anything, where they're going to go eat, where they're going to get Mexican, where they're going to get Italian, they're going to Google, Google, Google. So, if sanitation or the uh, cleanliness and the professionalism of the restaurant is a concern, it would seem very simple to me that you could Google that as well, because it is available. So I just wanted to speak to that, because that's what you just brought up. Um, now, I'm going to just jump to some notes, and I'm, I'm kind of all over the place. Because the beginning of this meeting, when you guys were talking about the information you were looking for, was that in relationship to advertising it, or is that just something you no. just would like no. for your own purposes? Right. Okay. Yeah. So to speak to that, it would seem to me that if I were the managers, or the, it seems to me that you're the managers of the manager, uh, the way I would do it is I would say, hey, Laura, what's going on this month? And I think within about five minutes, you could probably summarize very quickly, this restaurant did this, this restaurant did this, and this, and this, and then you would have a very specific and easily, a very easy questions to ask, and specific to what you're trying to achieve. You know what I mean? Fusilis uh, had this, um, why hasn't it been corrected? Well, it's only been two days. Well, Fusilis had this, uh, why hasn't it corrected? Well, it's broken, but they have a repairman in place, and is it a you know, historical, are there repeat offenders? I mean, just it would seem to me you would have very specific, and the person that it would have the most precise and clean information on it is going to be Laura and her second, right? Because there's only two people in the office right now. I think that's information is very consolidated and very easily accessible. Um, and I, and I, I, you know, I'm not part of the board, but I'm talking, so I might as well keep talking. At the end of the day, I would think because you guys are newer to this, if you have this information that you're looking for, right, it's going to consistently change and build and write and modify. So why wouldn't just a simple email monthly from Laura, hey, this is what's going on. These are the inspections that took place. You know, list them out who we went to. Um, nothing really radical to discuss. Only thing really radical to discuss is this. You know what I mean? And then if you had something more specific, you asked that and that got reincorporated and you made a real quick, simple email out of that. That's my take on that. But I don't know. Um, I was going to say the town of Reading singled out, um, but it seems to me that because it seemed like very desperate of us to look to need them for this. Um, press uh, this thing, but you're telling me that there's 23 towns within Massachusetts that are doing it as well. Is that correct? Uh, no, no, there were 23 towns, towns that we considered oh, towns. for call. 26. Okay, that we considered calling to ask for okay. things like what, how do you track, what do you make publicly available? I mean, easily accessible. How do you make it accessible? Do you put it online? Do you put it in the meeting minutes? Do, do we know how many towns, cities in Massachusetts have this implemented? Uh, no, and I've tried calling the, okay. um, the Massachusetts Association of Health Board. All right, so, so to that point then, unless other information is made available, because I don't know, I didn't research it, but it seems very desperate of us to need to have to hang this trial thing for the town of Reading on Needham when it's, it just seems really desperate to go up one thing when the rest of the state's doing it the way we've been doing it through and there really hasn't seemed to be much of a problem with it? Well, yeah, I see your point. I think you raised some good ones. For example, I think having Laura summarize for us who all she's seen and who needed reinspections and who has anything outstanding is pretty much along the lines of what we've been discussing because the way that she typically shares that information is in this Board of Health packet. Mm -hmm. It seemed like that sharing of information was a little contentious because that would include business names mm -hmm. um, and you know we need to discuss at what level do we actually include the business if, name if you two as board members or three board members have specific information you want then you're not talking about making it public i would take a quick phone call or email well, to satisfy that keep, that. keep, in, meeting law keep in mind it is public anyways well that's well that's my point yeah right so, so i mean and, sending and, and, it sending it to us privately uh, put into a meeting or into a packet, 
is, is right now. We just right. don't have it. So it's that's that that doesn't change anything right. from its from its its right. being public. Well, it does its accessibility because people can go online and just look at every monthly report and get it, as opposed to go to the individual restaurants and ask them for their health inspection. No, but this is alcohol. not um, this is not something we're distributing to the public. So what we I know. Just to kind of go full circle here, I know there's been a lot of things discussed in the last couple of meetings in regards to this specific topic, and I think, um, I said this a couple of times, it's very difficult when you have a board of three people uh, because we cannot talk offline about it. We have to do it here, that it gets um, somewhat messy in the way that you're literally thinking out loud around the subject matter. And it, I can imagine it's very difficult and frustrating uh, for the folks in the room to watch that and not know exactly what the outcome is going to be, that there's a lot of different things that are brought up. Is it going to be online? Is it not going to be online? Is it going to be accessible? All, the, all these different things. So believe me, I, I get it. Um, I think what we've come to uh, tonight that we haven't yet fully uh, voted to, to, to implement um, is a pretty fair compromise to be able to get information to board members but not have it broadcast in any format um, for the public to, to just pick offline somewhere they can get it if they so choose to right. to um, send an email it versus, it. Yeah. versus promoting it yeah exactly right. so it would be available to, this is what we've kind of just came up with um, was something to say okay we get the reports and then we can look through them they're not going to become part of the packet um, so it's not going to be something that's on the website as a result because it's not in the packet if it was in the packet it would then be on the website that's where the packet is yep, that's um, where the confusion yeah is. so just so everybody I, I don't want this to keep going on <laughs> on and on and on uh, but without knowing exactly what it is our line of couldn't it thought be is. simplified just on the border health page and just put a box restaurant uh, evaluations here and have a link. Oh, we don't, we're not even, we don't even need to do that. Going that far. Oh, okay. No, we're not, we're not even going to do that. I'm just trying. I mean, I, I, where this lady is coming from, too, like she wants to know that yeah. the place is clean, this and that. I mean, so my response to that is you can call us. We'd be happy to sit down with you. We'd be happy to email it to you. I'm just trying to make it easily with it and not getting to promoting it. So we, we've had zero foodborne illnesses, correct? Uh, right. Correct. So, I mean, as of right now, you know, the town of Reading is a very safe place to go out. Hmm. Um, uh, based on that information to me. So, you know, I, I, I think there's always things that are what I'll call nice to haves, but I think the board really would have to have a bigger discussion in regards to the ramifications of any, anything of that kind of rollout. So, from what you pr may have, um, where the line of thinking may have been from the last meeting has changed, I think, dramatically, and I think it's a, 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 a scenario that gets the information to a board member. Um, but also, like I said, does not broadcast it. Um, but that, that does not change the fact that the public can still get that information if they so choose to. If that's if they really feel like they want to know everything about the food establishments they're reading at, they can get it directly from uh, from that establishment. They can get it directly from the uh, health department themselves. Um, but um, my my belief has always been I don't we don't get any value as board members by promoting something like that online because it doesn't change the fact. Um, from a public health standpoint, that doesn't. There's no value add there. So I don't. You know, I, I hate doing things that don't have uh, has a zero value add. That actually could be an, uh, actual, a net negative um, when you look at it. If, I, if we if we have the information, um, I think that's a that's a really good compromise. Uh, I, I think it's you know it's it's available to us anyways. We're just asking the health agent essentially to do it every month. So we're essentially sending an email to the health department by you know taking a vote to say, hey, we do want that information every month. Just a way of someone from the public, if they wanted to do that once a month, they could they could do that as well. And a small, small but I think important point of order, um, at select board meetings, when we hear public comment, it's important to, um, we have the public comment be directed at the board okay. and, and not at other, other speakers. Okay. Um, you know, I know no ill intentions were, were made, but it, it keeps things. Okay. okay. Two quick and final points just for me. One of the concerns brought up last time is if it was promoted was interpretation, right? And not specific knowledge right. of the way sure. things are worded. And I think what lends itself pretty well to this was this little piece in the paper. I don't know if anybody saw it, but public health policy and businesses letter to the editor. 
Um, if you read this thing, it's got the Chamber of Commerce and businesses painted as this like villainous, like we got this conspiracy thing that we don't want to share any information and we don't care about the public health. And that's the furthest from the truth. And I think that's our problem with promoting it in that format is because, sure, right? I mean, like here, we all can read body language. We can t tell tone and flux and we, and we're having a rational discussion. This thing here made the last meeting look like we as restaurateurs were trying to uh, right. run this um, mafia style business uh, model, which isn't the, the truth at all. I mean, all the information's available. You, we're all, a lot of us are privately held. We're all vested in the community. Nothing's more important to us than public health, right? But so that was the point to that. And then my final point is, if you're going to put all this onus on uh, clerical and and right and, and reports and this and that and the other thing, and you only got two people, you're looking to hire a third, and they're only getting 37 hours. My question to you is, where's the time better spent? And it seems very simple to me that the time of an inspector is better spent inspecting a restaurant because I think there's no better way to work with the professional and work to the common goal as opposed to reading it about in the read about it in the paper. I mean, I, I don't again, you know, value versus investment. Right. Those are my points. Any yeah, my name is Thomas. I have a small bakery, uh, Swiss Bakers, and I have to tell you, I only have one question, actually two, but one first, <laughs> and you answered it. We have no increase of violation dramatically over the last couple of months, right? In the reading. Correct. So no. There is nothing happening epidemic that we have to be scared and discuss now the second hour about this. Absolutely not needed discussion. Sorry to say. I'm totally shocked. It's the first time that I'm in a meeting like that, maybe the second time or third time. I have the pleasure of paying taxes for 12 years for my business and privately for 20 years, and I love this town. But what I just experienced is for me total floor. I mean, when I heard that, that today this meeting is, I came in because I'm not such a good citizen, I'm always working and not always here in town, but that we spend valuable time of everybody here about something totally not necessary with the health department which does an amazing job. And if a business owner thinks differently, the health inspections are our life insurance. If you guys say you're good, you're good. And our guests are good and I think you can eat with your grandchildren and everybody in our restaurants, and you should. But that we spend so many hours to distribute now how on, on plastering on the board, I'm totally shocked. That's all I want to say. I'm, I'm floored when my dog tax dollars go. Uh, Brian Chu, I'm a local Reading resident, Timberneck Drive, um, and I spent my entire career in the food business uh, until about three months ago. Left it. Stuff like this is a big reason, and the way that the consumer has all the power already to absolutely just say anything they care to about a restaurant online and has no issues. So we've talked a few times, and again, the question was raised and answered today about inspections being available to any resident that wants it. We are a small town, okay? In your packet that you gave us today, it said that Boston had 4,700 establishments inspected um, on their mayor's food court, because I went and did my research. Um, they had about 3,800 inspections that they listed on there. It's understandable in a town of that size that need to speak to every person coming in because there are, there are everything. In our town, if I have an issue, I go speak to Mike. I go to the owner of the business. I go to the manager of the business. We go see Tom. We go see everybody. And we say, hey, this happened in your restaurant. And that's what we want to foster here. We want to foster a town where we feel like we care about each other and that the people who come to our establishments feel like we care about them and we can actually show them that we care about them. We don't want to have things posted so that somebody can just say whatever they want. That's not what it's about. We like a small town, we live in a small town because we have the access to the people so we can be a community. And isn't that what we've been trying to do with Reading 375? And isn't that what we do with the fall street fairs? We actually want to see people and be there. And in all of my career, I've never had an issue with the health department. As a matter of fact, I had even been interested in working for this health department at one point, okay? In my former life, I was responsible for physical and food safety training for 140 employees on a college campus, 
All right. And I had NSF come and inspect me separately. What's right? NSF? National Sanitation Foundation. And I would get fined outside of the town. I would get fined by this private entity if we weren't up to snuff. And we never had to put anything out there to the college kids that we were, that were there. We all do whatever it takes to protect people that are coming to our businesses already. And it is amazing the job that they do. And if we do something wrong, we correct it. Have either of you ever actually seen an inspection, been part of an inspection? Do you even know what goes into it? Have you looked in a restaurant or any other establishment before and see what we do uh, to, to know what it is? Um, you know, and, and then we talked about, have you, have you done a SWOT analysis? Have you done the cost benefit to see what it would be? What's the benefit of doing this versus the cost of doing it? Because that's what we do before we make any decision in our lives, is we do a cost benefit analysis and then we present it. We don't just say we want something and have no idea why or what the benefit of it is. So there's just, there's, there's multiple things. And, and my confidence in the board is lacking. My confidence in our health agent is astounding. Mm -hmm. And I think we all feel that way in this room. What's up? What's up? Thank you. Uh, my name is Paul Schauer. Oh, sorry. I'll direct my comments to the board. Uh, I appreciate the work that you're doing and your efforts to uh, make things uh, more transparent. I don't understand the resistance through uh, the restaurant owners about what appears to be fear of like, terrible things happening. I understand there can't be abuse of information. And I hope that we're able to find some sort of middle ground that will allow the disclosure of uh, the proper level of disclosure that will allow someone to be confident and in going into any restaurant because maybe it's a posting of last health inspection past, no detail. Uh, maybe it's whatever, uh, but uh, having the information, I, uh, I don't have a strong feeling about having the, the access to online. I understand the concern about having all the detail there, but I don't see that uh, about some sort of high-level summary information. I've observed, I've read through minutes going back years to see what the type of information that's been provided in the health agent report has gotten less and less specific. Uh, what the, the gentleman mentioned about, oh, well, here's the inspections from these 20 restaurants, and here's where there's a problem. Well, it used to be that way, or if you look back in the history, you'll see that, oh, from time to time, a restaurant was called out because there was a specific issue, and they worked towards resolution. And it was rare that that came up. And now, in the more recent period, there was a change, as you know, in policy, and that policy was never communicated to the board which is a surprise, and there was no notification or discussion. So there was a change that said, we want to be business friendly. I don't know that the town of Denver is not business friendly. That, I don't know that there was a, a history of persecution of restaurants. So I think that the request for information seemed reasonable to me, and some sort of summary makes a lot of sense, more than what has been presented thus far, as far as I you know. 23 inspections were done. Everything's good. Okay. What did you find? Were there any were there any uh, violations that I heard earlier that yeah that, that wouldn't be a problem? And I suspect the vast majority of issues are not problems that need to be broadcast or in restaurants closed. But I appreciate the effort to uh, make more information available in some sort of accommodative manner. And I know it's extremely difficult when you're a three-member board because you can't talk outside the room. Yes. Uh, and, and as a possible suggestion, you might take some time within the meeting here to sketch out that project plan of, of the three steps that need to be addressed and deal with the online links. You know, six months from now, so people don't have to worry about that because they don't even know what information is going to be linked. Thank you. Um, good evening, my name is Robin Crane. I am a vice president and a board member of the chamber. I'm also co-owner of Fitness Within, located at 545 Main Street. This doesn't impact me at all, but I am here to support the restaurants in town and my fellow um, business owners. To this, I feel this is equivalent if you post it online 
and broadcast it as a public flogging. I was, as um, Jean was going through, it's one of the violations was sink um, bay uh, sanitation pump. It had only, it had less than 200 pumps. It was running low. That's a violation. And I don't know if you ever have gone on to the Reading Ran, <laughs> but it's very easy for people to go in if they don't like a restaurant or they don't like a business, they don't like the owner, they don't like their neighbor who is the owner, to go in and, and really negatively impact them. They can now take this information, copy and paste it into and, and be, it will be accurate. And so I really think you have to really think about what you're doing to the businesses in town. I get, I want you guys to know this information. What I'm doing is entrusting myself to the board and, and to the health department to make those decisions of when it needs, it's important for me to know that I should, I'm, is, my health is in danger. My clients frequent all these restaurants in town and they're not even from this town. And they don't want to see it. So I just really think you have to think about what you're going to make public, when you're going to make it public, but I am entrusting you as employees of the town to take care of that and let me know when it's important. Not to just throw it out there for everybody in the world to see and then take it and put it negatively impact a business in town and potentially close them down, not because they're in violation, but because now they're getting negative reviews and they're not getting business and the patrons is not there. So all I'm asking as another business owner in town, just really think about the impact and, and what's going to happen down the road um, <coughs> if you make a lot of this information public. And I know right now you're not, but I know it's in the mind, in the back of the mind, but it's, it's so easy for me to go in to any of these restaurants and ask for their, their history or go call um, the town hall and very easily get that information if I'm that concerned. But I'm asking you as the board members and, and the departments just to let me know when it's important for me to be concerned about going to a certain restaurant. I don't really care that um, Bay 3 in a restaurant had sanitizer that didn't have 200 pumps it's running low. That's what you're talking about, every infraction, not the importance. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. No, I just the well, wanted to make sure that's how it is. Hi, I'm Lisa. I'm the director of the Chamber of Commerce, and I also live in Reading. Um, I don't want to belabor a lot of the points we've already discussed. I know there's been a lot of discussion, but I do think it's worth noting that in Reading, to the best of my knowledge, in years, there's been zero major health violations. And to the best of my knowledge, there have been zero requests at Town Hall for copies of the report. So that, to me, says things are going very well, and we should feel really great about that. I think the system is working. Um, to educate myself about this matter, because I don't know the code, nor do I, have I ever really worked in a restaurant, I called the um, Mass Restaurant Association. This practice is not common, but they did share some data at the national level, For and I know it's a lot of detail, but this, the city of Pittsburgh was considering a grading system that we talked about a little bit at the last meeting, and they abandoned it because they realized it wasn't going to work for them. It was going to be too much, and they're a much larger community, obviously. Additionally, providing data on um, minor infractions, and I'm not talking about a health is illness or full foodborne issue. That's a different matter. But the minor violations have been studied at length by, by Yale and other people. And they spent a lot of time researching this very matter of posting the minor infractions. And I would just like to read a sentence from the summary. Disclosure of minor violations may greatly alarm people without giving them any useful information at all. So it's not recommended. They studied the matter at Yale. And putting minor infractions out there does absolutely nothing to protect public health, which I know is our goal. It really will just cause a frenzy and working with businesses all over town and in the region, one minor Yelp review that a competitor may have published can sink people. I mean, the social media factor cannot be overstated. And I don't want to appear, to appear or be perceived that the restaurants are scared. The restaurants are awesome. We've had no problems. Like, I think we need to keep going back to those facts. Um, but I do think that the, the posting of every minor thing could be spun out in such a way that it would damage many local businesses and just be bad for the town and the community. 
So I ask you to consider that as you're thinking forward and making your plans because let me be clear, our restaurant owners are awesome. Many of them are privately held and I like the fact there's not 15 chains in our town. I think that's great. But what that means is that these people are feeding their families and employing our local college students and high schoolers and you know it's the place down the road that you love to go and that's going to go away because a big business can absorb some bad reviews or whatever but the small ones oh no they're going to go down so i don't want to see that happen but i also don't want there to be this continued perception that everyone's scared and worried it's it's really just a matter of i know what a reputation is built on and how long it takes to build a good reputation as a business owner and how hard everyone works. And that can all come down with just the whisper. When you say health violation in any business name, it, it can absolutely travel and spin into something like there's rodents in the kitchen, which actually was never even the case. So I just want to be very aware of that. And I don't want to see that happen here because everyone is doing a really good job. There's been no issues. We're very fortunate. Not every town has such a great track record. Um, so I think we need to go back to those facts, um, as well as the data that has studied all these matters before we say, oh, why are we worried? Let's just try it. A lot of people um, have looked at this very issue and you know, reached the conclusion that it wasn't meaningful and it didn't help. It didn't keep people safer and it actually gave people information that wasn't useful. Thank you. Yeah. Reply or should we continue to hear from? I wanted to make one point of clarification just so that because I've read the same study you're talking about and just to share my interpretation of that. Um, it was uh, in the Yale Law Review, so it was a study that was done by attorneys and not public health officials, so it wasn't like an experimental study. And my understanding was that they were studying a food grading system, so like restaurants get A, B, C, D, E, and they found that because there were so many variations in the way one restaurant might get an A and the same restaurant would get a B if a different inspector had done it, that they were questioning what that a grading system like that was of use. Um, so I, I mean I think that was an important study to bring up um, and that because it was a law journal they were really looking at whether or not how important is it when you pass legislation <coughs> that you have correct implementation procedures set in place and how important the rules are for how you implement these things and I agree with that too and there was some I think public testimony that was also provided by the Massachusetts Restaurant Association where the it was a public service agent who'd been working for many years in the field and he also did not agree with the grading the ABCDE but he felt that they were doing a great job the way that they had it and they did have an online searchable database that graded like green red yellow um, but <laughs> that may be a really long-winded answer um, but that we're not I do want to again make clear that we're not considering now anything like a food grading system it did come up in a meeting yeah. and we talked about it and that we're not considering food grading system and we're not considering posting um, the summary information on the website. Isn't that the perfect example of your, what you just said versus what she just said? She read the same article, you read the same article, you got what you got, she got what she got, and the interpretations left and right, right? So aren't we all just completely disgusted and sick of what social media allows to happen with this positive, negative, right? And th I think that's the point that we're trying to make is Everybody's not educated at the same level. Not everybody has the same time to read through the entire, right? So now we're going to look at that, that godforsaken Board of Health report that's graphed out, that's very difficult to read with CMR code, blah, 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 blah. And this is a, this is a fine, you know, you can get fined for this, and this is critical, and this isn't critical, but this has, right? Who, who Who's going to be able to, our point is that. Who, I'm not against the public by any means wanting to know how clean our restaurant is if you come into my restaurant I'll walk you through it front to back up and down you can watch us cook you can see how professional we are I'm that proud of it I'm not afraid of this report what I'm afraid of is the social media in impact that this will will have and I and if if, if people don't want to accept that I don't know what they're looking for 
Yelp right now will grade Fusilli Cucina. Say it's, I don't even know what they do, but say it's one to five. They'll grade us at a three, and then our phone's ringing to ask us if we want to uh, if we want to advertise with them. And if we do, they'll be sure that our rating goes up. This is the stuff that we're fighting every day. We don't need to be fighting it with the town of Reading. Okay, I think we need to have it a little bit because we've been talking a lot about online posting, which yeah. we are not actually. So if you have a comment about online posting. <laughs> We're not We're discussing not that. Discussing right. it right now, so um, no, not on the meeting. Right. Right now. Can I ask you a question? Does anybody of you ever has attended a health inspection? I no. Didn't answer that. I, I highly recommend do it because I think it's amazing. And I have seen it in big kitchens and small kitchens. How those health inspectors can stay level headed with a headstrong chef. <laughs> it's amazing because it's really super what they do. You know? They point it out realistically, they easy stand there and watch the dishwasher. Oh, you know, he doesn't wash the hand between taking clean table, uh, clean plates before he goes to the dirty uh, plates and so on. I mean, it's amazing and I think it should be almost part of your job description sitting here that once you do that, because it's amazing. And I'm inviting every guest to do that and every crew member has to do it in my business. I highly recommend it. It's super education. Great. And, uh, and I think a good point to uh, point out. So. Um, we're running well, right. well over we're time. Really um, <laughs> the the real discussion needs to be if, if you have a problem with the board of health receiving the information or not. Everything else is not on the table tonight. So in other words, it all only thing we're we're probably going to um, instruct our health agents to do is to send us the <coughs> reports right. only only to us. So you know it's publicly ready available information that that we could request on our own. We're just we're just kind of saying it up front. You know, we're pretend like we requested it from you every month, and just go ahead and send it along to us. So that's really all we're we're, we're talking about tonight. For us, not talking about posting it or putting it anywhere um, for any reasons. Can I ask a question? And I don't mean to beat things up either, but so if I send them to you every month, which I don't care, that's fine. But then will we be discussing them at the meeting? No. No. So there'll be no discussion. I just send them. Unless there's Unless some we unresolved violation, right. and it sounds like that doesn't tend to be a problem. But it's something that, given that the responsibility of knowing this information lies in the, with the Board of Health, it seems important that we would be able to review. Well, uh, I'm just, I'm just asking, like, should I be ready, like, to discuss it, like, at the meeting, or do I just send it and? The no, my feeling is that it, it, if, if a Board of Health member wants to ask you questions in regards to any of the should reports, they can shoot you an email. Yeah. Um, if there's something that rises to a different level and you know I'm sure in the past it's it's been brought um, to the boards for discussion but that would seem to be some kind of extreme case that since I've been on the board has not happened excuse me I have a point of information um, can something be mailed to all members of the Board of Health and not be public I don't understand how you can separate this no. out district it can be mailed separately yes. and it's not public part of the packet well it's already yeah, it's already public information. I mean, so right. But if you if you're looking at it and considering it as a as a governmental body, um, but we're not considering it. As long as they're not, we're discussing not discussing it at the you're meeting. You're not going to have it on the agenda every month like you have it now. An update on this? I don't understand how you. Would That's why I was confused about too. Like a summary. Oh, I thought no, like let's say part, part of the health agent yeah, reports like, still going through. We did so many inspections. Yeah. I assume we still would have that. So I said you have 15 inspections and there's no discussion on it? Well, I guess I assumed, and maybe I'm wrong, that right? you would still have the typical health agent report yes. that you have been doing. Yeah. Maybe separating inspections and reinspections. In addition to. If I could give some historical perspective on this, um, that it, if the board decided that something needed to be discussed at a board meeting, the they would put it on the agenda for the, for the following meeting. So they'd get the information, and um, if if uh, they wanted to discuss it, the chair would put it on the agenda if something was of concern. Um, and that's the way we we functioned. I'm not arguing for or against um, anything as far as uh, putting this on a website or whatever. Um, I'm just 
explain to what you used to do. One last um, my name is Emily. I work for Bagel World at 323 Main Street. Um, so just a couple of things just to reiterate. But I guess the first thing that I would say is I think we're kind of putting the cart before the horse. Um, as it stands from what I have gathered that there's nobody here, aside from you, who supervises two people who are serve safe, um, are not serve safe certified. This town is not, has not adopted yet the 2013 food code. Um, and from what I'm understanding, no one on the board, save, well, you're not, are you on the board? No. No, okay. So no one on the board is necessarily qualified to understand anything that they're reading. Uh, and I don't mean that rudely, except for you, maybe, because you, you understand a little bit. Um, but I would think that the main thing that you'd want to do is to get as up to date as possible before you start putting in information. I understand you want to gather it, and that's perfectly reasonable. And up to date, like we're up to date. We've had to study the 2013 food code, but we're operating under a previous food code. And you guys don't even know what the new one is, save the old one. Um, Something else that I, I wanted to address is that I understand from the op-ed piece that the businesses have been painted rather villainously, somebody else said. But, I mean, I'd like to say that we're all taxpayers. And what do we do as taxpayers when we have an issue? We write an op-ed piece. We contact the Board of Health. We write a letter to the mayor. We call a congressperson, we call a senator, right? That's what we do. So I think us coming and presenting United Front is just our putting our tax dollars at work um, and to show something that we have an interest in, just as anyone else would go before another board um, to express their opinion or write an op-ed piece that could be fairly anonymous. Um, so I don't want anybody to think that we're just trying to not give information. Uh, because it is accessible. Um, since the last meeting, I, I do have a question. Um, has anybody come to you since the last meeting, as it's been on YouTube, minutes are posted, and asked for any of the information? Has anybody asked for any health inspections? I would to me. I don't know if they've gone to any of the restaurants personally or anyone else, not to me. So everybody since the last meeting knows that this is aware. They weren't already aware that this information was already readily accessible, and they've still not tried to access it. I just find that very interesting. <laughs> um, has anyone on the board, when you've gone over, like, okay, these these are violations and they've been corrected? I think you mentioned at the beginning of the meeting. Um, has anybody asked what do these violations mean? I mean. You want a summary, you want all these things, you want facts and figures, but is it so hard to ask Laura, well, what does that mean? How does that translate? I think if this is already accessible for anybody who wants the information to watch it or to attend a meeting, then I think that they could just ask those questions readily. I could ask you, right? Correct. And you would, and you would have to answer me. Correct. Right? I mean, you might not necessarily know, but you would get back to me because that, that's how things work. Um, in regards to, this, this I'm a little bit shocked, in regards to, it was my question actually, to get local towns, the size, and, and things to do this. But what I heard was, there's 23 towns that we consider comparable to us. We didn't want to call them. Which means, if you couldn't go online and research these things, because if they're readily available, they would be there, right? Like these 23 comparable towns, you've had two months to look on their town websites and find out how many violations, what do they record, what do they track. But if in two months, you guys couldn't agree on what information you even wanted to try and find out from these towns and you wanted to call instead of typing it on the computer, that would seem to me that maybe it's not quite as important as you want to make it out to be or you just don't want to put in that effort, and I, and I don't mean that disrespectfully. We just can't, we can't talk. They can't talk, they can't they type can't. on a computer and-, and Hold on, hold on. No, no, no. Can you research on the website from your from your computer? Okay, and so uh, I'm just asking. I I, 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 understand, I understand that, but I, I think it's get, it's getting kind of late. And again, 
we're not we're not talking about that tonight. No, and I'm not I'm saying not like don't talk about, about it. I'm saying it. we're not we're it. not discussing and, and it. And so since it was my question and you did address it briefly, <coughs> I just I wanted to find out the information. That's all. I mean, <laughs> we sit here and we're, we're talking about this information and you, you want it and that's great and we've talked about public shaming but, and I know you don't want to talk about putting it online but don't put the cart before the horse. Get up to 2013 food code. Go visit some inspections. This is what I would encourage. Go visit some inspections. You know, get serve safe certified. Understand what you're talking about to a real degree and I, I don't mean that rudely, I swear to God. But find out exactly what it is instead of just saying, oh, this X, Y, and Z. Be able to understand how to read the report before you just stare at them in front of your face. Know what you're reading. Know what the content is, because we all have to. We have no choice but to. And that's why we're here. We're here for this town. And you guys are representing the town. Like you are, we are the governed, and you are governing us. So it would seem to make sense that you would want to know everything that we know. And part of that would be getting up to date and you know, adopting that food code. Start there and then work your way forward. Get the knowledge of what the code is before you start deciphering the code into a billion bits. I don't, I don't know how to better explain that and I apologize. I'm not trying to be antagonistic, I swear. I just, I don't know any other way to put it. I just, the questions that were asked the last time, they weren't sufficiently answered and no one has, you know, thought to think maybe I should do this. Okay. So shall we continue? Well, in, in, in her point, it, it is a good. They are good points. Good and valid points. Like start, um, start and I certainly and take and take that into consideration. Yeah. And I think definitely updating up. Updating the food code should be a priority. Right. We and when you suggest that, that you need to learn the last what that food code is, like understand it more. So that way when, when you do move on, you can understand the information that's being presented. Sorry, just a quick comment. So I was just pulling up um, the regulations and to be honest, you know, I apologize, I'm not as familiar with this as all of you are. But um, section nine of the Board of Health regulations does adopt Chapter 10 of the State Sanitary Code 105 CMR 590, which does incorporate the 2013 food code. So implicitly, the Board of Health has adopted the 2013 food code. You don't need to take another vote. You've already done it through your regulatory scheme. That's how I okay. understand this. Okay. I just wanted to make that clear. All right. So that's a vote. Yeah. Something. Yes. Um, hey. Do you have a motion? Sure. Um, make a motion to uh, instruct the health agent to uh, email to the board, uh, but not include in the packet the um, inspections and reinspections for that previous month. Okay, second. Second. All those in favor? Three zero. Motion passes. All right. Now. Uh, pesticide regulations. <laughs> Clearing the room. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thank everybody, you. for the time. Um, if you don't, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll um, run with this real quickly because mm -hmm. I know I know some of this um, ball has been um, in my court for a little bit. Yeah. Did you get a copy of the email that I had sent to Bob with my comments? Back in July, we were very brief. Um, I have to look back. Okay. My, okay. my they uh, were, emails. They were. I think we got it. You got that. Okay. Okay. We did. Did. Okay. okay. Yeah. Just wanted to make sure that you okay. got it and received. Yeah. Okay. I think it was the one that we got loud and clear. I think it was maybe some others that we. Yeah. So I, I think I, I had I've had a couple discussions um, with the chair of the select board mm -hmm. in regards to moving forward. Town council is instructed both of our boards to say come up with something you're happy with then send it to us don't send it to us with each different uh, different one so in that regard um, my suggestion would be uh, if you can if you at, at your next uh, meeting as, as liaison probably the, the smartest course of action would be to 
ask all the board members to submit comments to Bob in regards to um, the, the, the policy that or, I think I had done that at a previous, regulation that we at a previous okay. board meeting, but I can I will reiterate just to reiterate that and I think, at our next I think at, at, at one of our board week. meetings then, then we can take those comments okay. into consideration. So you haven't, you haven't we haven't done it. that okay. yet. Very yeah. good. So we haven't we haven't got feedback from okay. uh, all um, select board members. Well, I will bring that up at uh, next week's select board. Yeah, and then and then we can we can put it together into a new format based on those comments, one way or the other. Uh, and then we'll have something. Uh, that we can submit to town council. Hopefully, it comes back um, ready to go. I'm sure it won't. <laughs> uh, but whenever it does, I, it's probably then be uh, smart for the select board to have their own public hearing on that final approved document by both boards and town council. So that's the only thing I have on that. I think that's right. handle that that item tonight. Oh, that was the. Okay. There's no separate <laughs> conversation. Uh, well, we can have a separate. No, I mean, no, we can certainly no. have a conversation, I'm, I'm but just I. I'm shocked. Well, I just don't think there's, you know, until we actually put we together that, that, yeah. that new yeah. okay. document, I don't think there's really much to talk about. Yeah. But. It's, okay. CBD advisory. And we have town council here for the for this. Can I come up here for you? Sure. No, oh, so you should stay by your computer. I'm fine here. Um. So we circulated a letter explaining the current state of the law, and we just wanted to bring it to the Board of Health for the board to make a decision on how they want to proceed moving forward in this town. I think I circulated, I'm not sure if it got to all the board members, but an NPR article that was a good summary of what other communities are also doing. Our letter highlights what North Reading has done with notifying food establishments of the new rules and regulations. Um, other communities are doing kind of everything across the board from nothing to strict enforcement without even sending a letter, walking in and, you know, fining someone for having CBD products um, on their shelves. So we really wanted to just present the option to the board to see, you know, do you not want to do anything? Do you want to say, ask for voluntary removal of CBD products? Do you want to do something similar to what North Reading did with a notification and then maybe start enforcement after an, a set date. Um, so it's really up to the board. The only thing we want to make clear is, and during this discussion, you know, the policy will apply to all establishments, so we don't want to single out one establishment. You know, if Whole Foods or, you know, is, has CBD on their shelves, it would apply equally to them as it would to the mom and pop shop selling CBD. So we want to make sure that that's clear as the, the board's discussing the matter. Happy to answer any questions on the letter and the state of the law, but to me, this is really a policy decision. You know, we've outlined what the federal government is doing, what the state is doing, and now it's sort of the town's opportunity to figure out what they want to do and how the board wants to direct the health department to act. A couple questions in regards to this. Okay. Um, so this is in regards to CBD and pertaining to um, food, correct? That's integrated with Right, so there are some other products that are not permitted, and I uh, outlined those in the letter, but you know, those are sort of outside the scope of what the Board of Health typically regulates. We're talking about animal feeds and, and stuff like that, dietary supplements, um, the advertising of those. That's where the federal government has really been putting a lot of their enforcement dollars, uh, you know, kind of spurious allegations around the health benefits or not not supported with science or in their view science um, so but here what we're talking about tonight is yes food establishments that are either adding CBD to products or selling products that have CBD um, in them so like the a container of the CBD oil itself that people use that's ingestible right if it's ingestible yeah if it's, it's ingestible consumable products consumable products are what we're talking about tonight. the way we have our bylaws set up is they're not allowed to sell those products do I have that correct so through your regulations they're not allowed to sell those products because the federal government um, basically the federal government the FDA said CBD can be added to certain drugs for epilepsy and in doing that the federal government said when federal government classifies a product as a drug, which they did for CBD, then any other use of that product needs to be approved through them, either in specific cases, so each time it's used, you get approval for that specific product, or they can do like a blanket regulation, we're okay with CBD and all of these different types of products, and that's a blanket, you know, blanket approval. And so at this time, they haven't given the blanket approval. So we're in this sort of land where it's 
really not allowed at all. Um, it violates the federal law. Massachusetts, instead of taking the position that they have historically taken with marijuana, said, in this case, we're going to follow the federal government's rules. So both MDAR, which regulates hemp and the cultivation and use of hemp, and we are going to follow the federal government here. And in doing that, they incorporated the federal government's policies into the regulatory scheme. And so now, through your regulations, you have the ability to enforce food products that can, you know, whether an individual is selling a food product with CBD. You can bring an enforcement action against them. Yeah. Can or shall? Yeah. So <laughs> this is the weird. Or this is the weird zone, right? You can definitely. Um, different communities are adopting different policies in this regard, and that's why I say I've outlined the law, and each community can make a decision what fits best for them. To our knowledge, the state isn't really enforcing it, but they're not stopping communities from enforcing it. If you call um, the Massachusetts Public, you know, the Health Department, they'll advise you that it's within your right to enforce it. So it's, like I said, there are communities that are doing absolutely nothing. There are other communities that are taking a strict enforcement policy position. So I noticed in your letter you mentioned something about our zoning bylaws. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so this is a little interesting kind of yep. tidbit. So when <laughs> Yep, it really is. Yeah, so when the marijuana uh, bylaw was adopted, the way that they defined marijuana was very, very broad. And it included hemp and hemp derived products. So technically in Reading, hemp and hemp derived products are considered marijuana and marijuana is prohibited in town. That's being changed and Jean might be able oh. to elaborate more, but there is a proposal to make the definition of marijuana come into uh, mirror the definition of marijuana in the state statute and in doing so would take hemp and hemp derived products out of okay. your local bylaws definition of marijuana. The fix on zoning is easy. Okay. This is more complicated. <laughs> so is that, is that something that's going before town yes. meeting to um, Yes, yeah, CPDC's had the public hearings and it's, it'll be on the... Uh, November. November? November. Yep. So, so we may want to stay well, on, I mean, on this one in regards to seeing how town meeting uh, votes on it. Because if they... Let me get this straight. If town meeting votes to adopt the state uh, language, then hemp and hemp derived products would be legal to sell in this town. It's still not CBD. So, right. So, <laughs> so under zoning. Under zoning. Under zoning. Yeah. yeah. So it, even if hemp and hemp derived products, including CBD, are permitted under zoning, we still have to look at what does the board of what does the board of house regulations say and your regulations direct us to the state's regulations which direct us to the federal regulations so it's sort of like a chain of who said what but at the end of the day the federal government said right now cbd is not allowed to be added to um, consumable products to food products and so through that chain it trickles down that a business selling food products that contain cbd in town is in violation of your Reading Health Code, and so okay. it's up to you whether you choose to enforce in this regard or not. Now, can we change, if we so wanted to, could we change our health code to not match the state or federal? So I've seen it where it becomes more rigid. Um, I'm not sure that you could change it to become less, like below the standard that the state sets. Okay. At the end of the day, these establishments are not only respond, or, um, accountable to the Board of Health and the Health Department, they're accountable to the federal inspectors and the state inspectors as well. And so, you know, they would be still violating the state regulations if they chose to sell these products, notwithstanding the fact that you say it's okay. Uh, but again, it's... So regardless of that, regulation would still fall on us if we so chose to regulate it. Right. So is it better to wait until after zoning makes the decision? No, it doesn't make two separate, yeah. two separate two separate things. things. Yeah. Right. 
That's why I was asking the question. Yeah, that wasn't because if we if essential. if we could change our regulation, not meet the state, then it would make sense to wait to see what the town meeting uh, discussion came of. Right. I mean, that's something we can look into, but I have never. My gut reaction to that question is no. That the state has set, you know, the lowest level of regulations that you can. Because the state more rigid, just not less. Okay. The state does their own inspection as well, correct? They can. I mean, generally, municipalities kind of lead the charge and inspect, like, as you know, as you've done, you know, lead the charge in inspecting. But there's nothing, to my knowledge, that would preclude a state inspector from looking at a facility. And that facility would have to comply with their regulations, the state sanitary code, anything else that would apply to them. Okay. I've never heard of less. Okay. This is a tricky, fun one. It's just so there's such a lack of knowledge around CBD right I know, now, too, which, which, is, ma I which think makes it even harder. The state is doing what they're doing, right. and, and also I'm not sure if, if it was um, pointed out sufficiently in the letter, but there's a there is a lot of movement at both the state level and the federal level to quickly make CBD legal, and so one other option is to just wait, um, you know, as you're just considering all of the options that are available to you. Oh. What we could do maybe is issue a memo to, yeah, let people know what's going on and that it is currently illegal to sell it. Right, right. To put CBD into food products or right. to market or them to as being cures for whatever ailment. Even um, so, right. yeah, right, yeah. yeah. Um, so, I like that idea of just That's making like informational public that this is something that's under consideration at the state and federal levels. Currently, these are the policies that are yeah. in place. Which, but those policies may change. Right. Do you know is the So the changes are in the legislature, right? That's where they were big changes. But the MD, MDAR is going to just stay as they are, right? So I, I guess it could yeah, change. Yeah, it could change. Right? <laughs> so all my knowledge is um, restricted to the letters that MDAR has put out and, you know, their FAQs online that the, yeah. you know, the Department of Public Health has issued. Um, so that's all we know. The changes that are pending in the legislature, those are being pushed by um, members of both our House and our Senate at this time. So those are separate. I think if I was a guessing person, I would guess that both MDAR and the Department of Public Health are, are going to wait to see what happens with you know during this legislative session. Um, I don't think they're going to change their policy. Um, absent any movement at our state yeah. level. So we had mentioned that MDA or stuff beginning of the year maybe we just like briefly touched on it which was that I think there was a suggestion or maybe some towns were uh, notifying retail food establishments that they needed to have um, evidence that their products, their CBD products, were from um, MDAR registered growers and that they had met certain testing requirements. Um, and that's, because that's what MDAR, it's, that's the guidance I think from MDAR. Um, so I don't know if that's something that we should incorporate in such a letter. Sorry, which is that too particular much? thing about India are we thinking of incorporating? The that um, that that uh, vendors should have evidence should be able to provide documentation that the product is sourced from MDAR or registered. Or registered. But it would still be, it's still illegal currently. 
even if it is that, right? Yeah, it's still illegal. Yeah, so <laughs> Wait, I, I, the I, NBAR I, thing came out first. Yeah, so it seems confusing. almost too confusing. Too yeah. Confusing. Yeah, I mean, I think we. My yeah, my suggestion would be to, yeah. you know, send that letter that we that we just discussed a moment ago, stating, you know, telling them of, of what the regulations are in town, and, you know, this is kind of a, a new and fluctuating uh, topic to the point of where that was uh, that policy may change in the future depending on um, what comes from the legislation, um, and, and we'll probably leave it at that. I think yeah. if it comes back that the legislation changes it, and it is now legal, I think that would probably be the next step right at that point. Say. Yeah. But okay, now, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fair. Okay. Um, so, so I don't think we need to take a. Do we need to take a vote on to send this these letters out to the establishments? All food establishments. I know I always have a question. All food establishments we're going to send a letter to, right? Uh, I guess you should, right? I mean, not just the ones that are currently have it. I guess you got to send it to everybody if you can send it. So. Who's okay. going to write the letter? Uh, that's a right. great like question that, what I was going to ask next. Yeah, I this this seems like a legal letter, I would say. I'm happy. We're <laughs> Just happy throwing to it draft, up there. We're happy to draft a letter, letter and work with the chair, um, you know, to make sure that it's in a space or we can bring it back to the whole board. What I'm hearing is it's more of an informational letter. Um, right. Okay. Yeah. Um, just a notification of what, what yeah. what's on the books right now and how those books may change yeah. uh, in the Would future. Would the have something like, like right. that? Right. So I think the letter could actually be fairly short, just um, attaching the policies that both the DPH and MDAR have issued. So we're not really redrafting okay. anything, just as a reminder, pursuant to section nine of our regulations, you know, we've incorporated the, you know, the state food code and the state food code, they're following these policies and then just attach the two policies so that everyone understands, um, you know, what's going on. Okay. I think it's important to add in that, that those policies may change in the future. For sure. Pending mm -hmm. legislation. Mm -hmm. Quick question: Would those would that would that letter be going to the Natural Food Exchange and to the CBD store? Those uh, just considered everything. Establishments. Well, I would have to go. I mean, so that's a, the all of them. Yeah, all technically, the gas state, all the convenience stores, everybody. Do we do we inspect the uh, the, the CBD, CBD store? store? Uh, no. So yeah. Okay. They don't have the a food, food exchange. They don't have a food permit. Should so we be inspecting them? I don't. I don't know enough about the specific establishments. That's something we can talk about offline. Yeah. If they don't have a food permit, it wouldn't right. show up in our system. No. Right. Should we add them? So really, <laughs> it could be. I don't even know where you begin to know who's selling. Who's selling it. it. I know. It's the two I, primary places. Right. Yeah, exactly. Right. I don't know. Well, no, because I've seen like places like random places so like a gas stations sell it hairdressers yeah. sell it a lot of places like yeah you would have to know like every single solitary my concern is if we single out two businesses and there's 15 that's true. Years, no, you know, that's that's true. true yeah but like i've seen it like not my hairdresser doesn't have it but i've seen it at other hairdressers yeah. places so you online. have to send it into every business in town so another another option to consider is we just send it to the food establishments that are licensed with the town and make it available on the website. At this point, it's just an informational letter, yeah. so it doesn't yeah. seem like it's being directed for a specific enforcement. But it would not, purpose. I would not go to CBD, my CBD store. That seems like a fair. Seems like not thing to have happen. Dan Dewar, I own the Ready Quick Stop. I I've been solicited to sell CBD oil. I chose not to because I have a neighbor that specializes in it, but you know, I, I have access to vendors that have C B D products. Somebody was saying that you can get, even get it at the coffee shop in your coffee. Right. Yeah. And and that's the not to get too off topic, that's been the biggest um, place you'll see it, especially in New York. It's been really big adding it to coffee and so a lot of the enforcement in some larger cities like Boston and New York has been mostly coffee shops. I have to People ask. Also vape it. Who, 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 what do they sell it in a salon for? <laughs> I guess it's in your cream and in your hair products oh, and your, yeah, in your moisturizer. It's in everything. But, but, that's, that's, but that's not an ingestible, so that would be legal. They also have like little things, sticks of honey. Uh -huh. So while you're waiting to get your hair done, they give you coffee and you can have the honey or tea, whatever you put on honey in, I forget. Mm -hmm. so, um, you can put the honey in your coffee or tea. They got it in everything. Oh, I, it's, 
Yeah. Sorry for inter- interjecting. No. Just, so. And that got that off social media, which we've been talking about all night. Nice. <laughs> so we'll send it out, send it out to all food establishments. Yes. Do we want to include my CBD? Oh. That doesn't fall within our purview. Right, right? it doesn't fall within. But protecting the public health does. Mm-hmm. So what's that gray line? Well, but posting it online, I think it makes it, it accessible to businesses. Yep. Yep. Yeah, this one seems like a uh, notification and a wait yeah. and see yep. Uh, yep. kind of thing to me. Oh. Yep. So I'm sending a letter to everybody I have up that gets a permit through me. Okay. Yeah. So then, just so I'm clear, so you're drafting a letter and then we review it at the next meeting or whenever it's ready? Is that the procedure? Yeah. I would okay. say that's sufficient, right? We want to see it before it goes out. Yeah. Do you want to send it to me and I'll distribute it prior to the next meeting? Yeah, that works. Okay. Thank you. When's the next meeting? Do we have it scheduled? <laughs> Now, so probably September 16th. Quick. <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm not, because I don't have yeah. my calendar. I have it in my calendar. I have September it September 16th as well. <laughs> Stop looking when you get it. I don't put it in case you guys change it, that way I can set up my. <laughs> That's fine. We can, we can definitely get you a draft by that date. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So on to reviewing the minutes. Yes. Thank you very much for coming tonight. Nice seeing you again. Yeah. Yep. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. <clears throat> Did anyone have any? Nope. I can't find it. I don't oh, wait, remember. Wait, 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 wait. I remember I didn't have anything. I just remember. It was like a strategy. I just thought I didn't change. Okay. So. Let's remember. We have a motion to approve the minutes. This is the minute. From the previous meeting. Oh, the meeting. June. June 19th. Oh, 18th. June 18th. 18th. We have a second? Second. All those in favor? 3 0. Motion passes. We have a motion to adjourn. <laughs> Do those, so motion to adjourn. <laughs> Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor? 3 0. Motion passes. All right. Yeah.